they take your your facial and they can recognize you on the street anywhere in China. Yeah. Literally, it's it's Big Brother. Well, we stand out in China anyway, but uh, <laughs> with <laughs> recognition, we stand out twice as much. Welcome to this week's edition of the Weekly Travel Alert. I'm Steve Glenn. And I'm Paul Glenn. Paul, this week we are continuing with our month-long 2024 travel predictions for the year. Every year in the last 20 years, I've been putting together annually all my travel predictions, and I've historically had 70% or more of these predictions be correct. So I'm still hoping that this year I can be above 70%. I got some duds in here, I must admit, and you'll point them out, I'm sure. Okay. Number 31 on our a list of 2024 travel predictions, and we're going to have 60 in total. So number 31 reads, hotels will charge you a housekeeping fee of $15 a night. Paul, we've actually already seen that in some hotels where the hotels are trying to generate more revenue. Well, now they do it with resort fees. Now, if you want your bed made up daily, they're going to charge you a a, a hotel or a cleaning fee or a housekeeping fee, that stinks. You know, I, one of the things that I think of as I consider that one is, is at what point are they actually pushing business to go the route of an Airbnb or yeah. a VRBO? Because that's one of the reasons I want to go to a hotel is so that someone else is there to Dude. make it so that I have comfortable surroundings every night Great when point. I get back to the hotel. So at, at what point are they doing themselves harm? Yeah, and I, I always, when I check in, say I always want cleaning. I'm usually a, a platinum member or something, so they don't charge me sometimes if I'm a platinum member. So that's one I don't like. The second headline of this week's Weekly Travel Alert, our 2024 travel predictions reads, getting your passport renewed will move online this year. Three cheers, Paul. I, I hope so. You know, everything everything at this point should be able to be done online. And the nice thing, I think, about that is hopefully, along with being able to uh, submit for it online, is hopefully there'll be a tracking mechanism then that's associated with that as well. Tell because I think that's one of the, the great questions that's come up over the last couple of years is, is this going to take me six weeks to get my passport back? Or is this going to take me 20 weeks? And it's been Ventures all take the, 20. Mine, mine took 20 plus, uh, <laughs> probably for other reasons. But, uh, but you know, I think that that communication and being able to, uh, to keep tabs on where you're at in the process, I think will be a, a benefit that will come with this. And continuing on the digital line, number 33 in this week's weekly travel alert, our travel industry 2024 predictions reads, facial recognition will replace your airline ticket and passport. We have already seen this when you're global entry, you used to have to put your passport in that machine to get through and do your fingers and now that just takes a picture of your eyes. Walk up to the machine, stare at it, yeah. find the little green dot and all of a sudden you're you're on to the next step in the it process. It doesn't so. even push out a receipt anymore nope. you just walk through the counter and they say have Security a good guards, day yep you're mr glenn yep well go and ahead then, and then also united and other airlines now are checking in a lot of international flights they don't need a boarding pass they walk up take a picture of your eyes yep. boom you're on and you know i like that but i don't like it i'm worried about personal security uh, i know when we and you and i go to J uh, china they take your your facial and they can recognize you on the street anywhere in China yeah. literally it's it's big brother well we stand out in China anyway but uh, <laughs> with uh, recognition we stand out twice as much number 34 the headline in this week's weekly traveler reads there will be another pandemic scare somewhere in the world in the late 2024 that the world will largely try to ignore well, you probably want to hold your, your ears like this and go, na, 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 when I tell you this one. So uh, what I did is research and I found that every two or three years, the world has a pandemic. Let me read these. You won't believe these. Since uh, 1999 to 2002, we had the West Nile virus. Then we had anthrax. Then we had SARS. Then we had mumps. Then we had E. coli. Then H1N1, whooping cough, MERS, Ebola. Zika, and now COVID-19. Every three years, there's a major outbreak around the world. Uh, but I think what ha is happening now with COVID is people put it in perspective. And they understand 
like we still have COVID, yeah. uh, but they're still traveling. There's not mask. They understand that they have to be cautious, but they still want to travel. Yeah. Well, and I think you're seeing that just in, in life in general now as people are more <clears throat> aware of their own personal health. And so they're they're taking precautions based on if they're not feeling well, then they might be wearing a mask. Or if they are more concerned, then they might be wearing a mask. But uh, hopefully, hopefully, you know, if there is another uh, pandemic of sorts that's laid out there, uh, we can get through it without having the uh, the chaos that was brought about the last time around. The next number 35 reads, dogs, dogs, and more dogs travel in 2024. Paul, it seems like every flight has a dog. And sometimes I can hear one barking in front of me and I can hear one barking in back of me. I've even had to have seen a person get taken off the plane because their dog was loud and causing problems. I love dogs. I'm a dog person. Yeah, but uh, it's there's got to be some fence around this. <sighs> where, I, where I've been challenged with it is when I've had to share a row, and especially when you're going out of an airport like Lincoln, where you only have one or two, se two seats on each side, and somebody's got their German Shepherd, and the German Shepherd is long enough that it's taken up the, the, the space for your feet of both seats in that row. So, you know, it's one thing if you've got a small dog. Um, my last dog was one that they wouldn't allow on an airplane just because of its breed and the, the health risk of it. But, you know, a small dog versus or small dog or cat, you know, cats are, are just as... Uh, as prevalent on flights, but uh, those big dogs I understand service animals, but there needs to be some sort of consideration for that, whether it be that they actually have to obtain multiple seats. And I know some airlines will accommodate for that if that is a need. Uh, but but maybe at some point they do. It's you have to prove you need that service dog, and if that is a larger service dog, then you've got to uh, maybe request that extra space like like uh, Southwest Airlines does for people that need more than just what one seat gives. Sure, for they size. They allow somebody to, uh, to right. obtain a second seat without paying for it. Number 36 on this week's edition of the Weekly Travel Alert. The headline reads, The big three airlines, that's United, Delta, and American, will continue giant international expansion in 2024 as that is where they make their money. Paul, People don't realize these major airlines don't make their money domestically. They make all their money traveling between Chicago and Rome and in international travel to Europe, to Asia, and around the world. They make it in business class, yep. <laughs> and they make it from the uh, people that are willing to pay higher amounts of money and travel long distances. So we're seeing massive international expansion, United, American, Delta, they're all growing exponentially into Europe. Now they're coming back in Japan, and pretty soon Ch uh, China will expand again too. So that's where they make their hay. Well, I think if you think about it and think about just the financial piece, a smaller airplane, say a flight from Lincoln to Chicago, uh, if you break down what the revenue is for that, that single leg, even at the high end of $100 per seat, that's only $5,000 in revenue on a 50-seater, where one seat on a, a international flight is going to cost more than that five thousand right. dollars could cost three x that so yeah. it's also the business they're all fighting for because that that is how they how they get their profits headline number 37 in this week's weekly travel alert on 2024 travel predictions reads throw away your boarding pass in 2024 as biometrics will be the future of security check-in paul this is very similar to what we talked about earlier but those people that travel domestically and have to go through security check um, they're going to see that in a biometrics uh, fashion we're seeing that to happen in larger cities and it's going to come to all airports yep it's coming quick and it's something that we just have to be ready for it's going to be different um, especially when you've got people that aren't regular travelers that they're going to have to get used to that but uh, as you mentioned before we, we've seen this in other parts of the world it's just a matter of how quickly is it going to take over here domestically paul you know it's so fun to talk about the future and our industry We've, we've seen so much excitement this year in 2023. Now we're looking at 2024 where we're recording this. One of the things that I saw in, in our headline number 38 is vacation villas are all the rage in Europe in 2024. The old way of traveling, you know, Europe, you'd hopscotch hotel to hotel, pack and unpack and pack and unpack. And uh, now we're seeing people go to a villa like in Italy 
and be the hub. And then, like you and I, stayed in a villa in Umbria, Italy, which is up by Florence, and we took daily trips to Florence and Siena and Assisi and Rome and all those, and don't have to pack and unpack and have no hassle. It's kind of the best way to travel. It was very comfortable, and I think that's that's maybe the change in mindset was – you had the home base, and and actually how we did it with, uh, you know, we, we each had seven or eight other people traveling with us, that you had your adventures during the day, and some of those were together, some of them you could get out and do your own thing, but you came back at night then, and there was a camaraderie, and yeah. you could share, so I really enjoyed what we did over there uh, with that trip, and and definitely, that's, that's the outlook on how I want to uh, do it next time. It's actually, it's kind of similar to... I would compare it to what we're doing next summer with our, our cruise. You know, yeah. two weeks on a boat where you're at a different destination every day and you're out and about, but then you come back to home base every night. Yeah. So it's kind of taking that concept and putting it into a land program. And Paul, executive travel is looking at this uh, strategically as well for our customers. We're looking at purchasing a villa in Italy, perhaps one in Greece and one in the south of France and other parts of Europe so people can do exactly this kind of have the perfect vacation for family, for friends. So it's exciting for 2024. The next headline, number 39, reads, car rental taxes can add up to 60% to the cost of running the car. Paul, I don't know if you've ever looked at your car rental receipt and see what the car rental is and then all the taxes on. You can add 60% to that car rental. So that $50 car rental can be $85. I, every car rental that's done for our company's travel ends up coming into my email box with a receipt. So, uh -huh. so I get to look at those quite regularly. And it is amazing how a $45 rental ends up being a $90-some dollar charge at the end of the day. So, And I guess a piece of that that maybe not everybody understands is a lot of that is to cover their expenses. A lot right. of that's going to the airport. Right. Uh, it's going to for the you know, facilities, the, the taxes for yeah. the facilities right. and things like that. So it's not necessarily the car rental companies that are are passing those through. That's actually a charge. It's a separate line item that's being passed through from the airport facility. and the cities. The cities the now, the city of Omaha has a tax. They charge for a car tax, rental, yep. and so tax, tax, tax. You know, it's just overwhelming a little bit. Item number 40 on this week's Weekly Travel Earth. This is the 2024 travel predictions. Reads, 2024 will be the year that more people will earn free flights and elite airline status using credit cards than flying. Paul, used to be the frequent, the people that sat up front were the, the people that traveled every week or, and spent a lot of money with the airlines. Now the airlines have changed everything. They basically saying you can earn status by spending money at McDonald's. On a credit card. Yeah. Well, and then every flight that you get on, at least on United, they are trying to get you to sign up for their credit card. Yeah, and indeed. they're giving you 60, 80, 90,000 miles if you do so. So that's definitely a focus that they've got. And I don't know what their model is for where they're getting revenue off of those credit cards, but there's got to be a piece to that as well. Well, the credit cards companies are paying the airlines for those, usually about two cents a, a, a mile. So uh, uh, someone said uh, that the airlines make more money on their credit card points that they sell to banks than they do selling tickets. That's pretty amazing. That is. Yeah. Number 41 on this week's Weekly Traveler. Paul, this is uh, what's bugged me for many years. Airlines are about to kill the goose that lays the golden egg by allowing too many people in the airline lounges. My gosh, like you said, the airlines sell credit cards on their flights, and one of them is the United Club airline uh, credit card. Well, guess what? They're selling free admission into their club if you take that credit card. Yeah. And then the clubs are so full, you can't even fit into some of them when it's high time during the day. And uh, now they make it so they're so full, you can't buy a single, single access. Single day passes are not so an option. So here you got this golden egg and they're going to kill that goose because they're just going to the well too much yeah well and you know i think that that's one of those things that used to be that yeah the the, the road warriors were the ones that had access to those lounges but now with the credit cards it seems like anybody has access to the lounges anymore so you know what what hopefully what we see is with their investments in making it so the experience is at a greater level than it has been. And we've seen this in places like Denver, and they're still working on Denver. 
but they're they're updating the clubs, adding right. clubs, making them newer, making them nicer. Um, so hopefully they'll continue that and uh, and make it so that you know they recognize that the the occupancy is a challenge and make it so that they can still make it so it's something that's got value. Cause and and now the credit card companies are getting into it. Uh, Amex has their platinum card lounge. And now uh, I heard Chase is coming out with airport lounges. So it'll be interesting to see the proliferation of lounges in all these different airports ahead of us. Paul, we're talking today about 15 travel predictions for 2024. This is our third week of 15 predictions every week. We're going to have 60 in total. And uh, this has been a lot of fun. The, the next trend that we see is one that's pretty amazing. Number 42 this week reads, one of every three hotel rooms will go empty in 2024. Uh, hotels rebounded from COVID strongly, but even with that rebound, hotels are highly profitable, but three out of 10 rooms go empty on average every night. So that means there's always an opportunity if you're flexible that to find empty rooms, yeah. probably, unless you're in a sold out Olympics or you know, a Cornhusker football game on a Friday or Saturday night, for example. But that's a lot of hotel rooms. Yeah, well, empty. when you think about it, there are really two types of, of destinations. You've got leisure destinations and you've got corporate destinations. And so if you're going to a big corporate city, say in Atlanta or something, they're going to be full during the week because that's when the business guys are traveling in. But then on the weekends might be a great opportunity. So, you know, you can actually figure out how to use that to your advantage and find great pricing by going to a destination, uh, say, Atlanta uh, for a vacation weekend. Plenty to do, um, but it's not one of those places that I naturally think of when I'm trying to think of a weekend getaway. Well, and also you can look at downtown convention ho hotels for the weekend when they don't have conventions versus during the week when they do. So with that, I have number 43 in this week's weekly travel alert. The travel trends and predictions for 2024 reads, the hottest travel trend of women traveling with groups of other women will get even bigger in 2024. Paul, five years ago, Executive Travel started a division called Women of the Midwest. And with that, it's for women only traveling that want, want to travel with other women. Perhaps their spouse would rather go hunting or fishing, and they, but they want to travel. And what we've seen is that's grown rapidly and will continue this year as we see more specialists. Once again, it's the uniqueness of travel. They want to share similar things, do things that they wouldn't do at home or see when they're out traveling. Well, great examples would be like the Rose Parade. Right. It's, I'm not a parade guy. I've, I've done the Rose Parade and I really enjoyed it. Um, and I'm doing and it again. And you're going this I'll, I'll be going, yes. Um, and so, but that's something that if I was a husband, that wouldn't get me excited to go out to, to L.A. Or, the, Come on. or do the tulips in Amsterdam, uh, things okay. like that, that uh, that I would be less excited about. So I think that's why we've seen some great interest is they can do it, they can travel with other people of similar interests. And what, what we tend to find is then they make friends and then they go on another adventure uh, with that group of friends that they made on this on their, their trip. So It's amazing this year there'll be over 40 women-only trips. If you go to executivetravel.com or womenofthemidwest.com, you're going to see all these trips for 2024. Paul, number 44 on this week's weekly travel alert reads, the two best months to travel to Europe are May and October. And if you think about it, those two months, you have great weather, fewer crowds, great prices, Everybody's either back to school or back to work, and those are perfect. Circle that month of May and circle that month of October. That's when you want to travel for sure to Europe and I think in the U.S. as well. Yeah, well, based on what you just shared for the reasons why, why wouldn't you want and that's to? That's right. Well, let's get going. Number 45 in this week's edition of the Weekly Travel Alert, uh, sponsored by Executive Travel, reads... Travel insurance is a must for travel in 2024. The one thing that COVID taught travelers is they don't control a lot of things and they've invested thousands of dollars when they're traveling to Europe, traveling with their family. They need to protect that investment. Travel insurance is one of the best ways to do that. So if you get COVID or even your family member gets COVID, you're protected, your investment's protected. I'll remember years ago, my wife's gr uh, grandmother passed away. We were in Greece on a cruise, and we just jumped on a plane, got back as fast as we could, 
We didn't even ask questions about insurance, which we had. When we got back, we filed a claim, said here's our price, prices, and they protected what we paid, gave that back to us, paid for our airline tickets and hotels to get home. It, was, it saved us thousands upon thousands of dollars. Do not go to Europe. Do not go internationally unless you have travel insurance. And I think another thing for consideration is you know, when you do leave the United States, your health insurance likely but, doesn't cover you. Right. So, you know, my situation a couple of weeks back, and my, my worry was I was going to be in Italy and I was already having a health challenge. And it's like, last thing I want to do is end up in a hospital that yeah. I don't speak the language. So, yeah. you know, health insurance will cover getting you to a place that's up to standard U.S. medical uh, levels. Um, and also a, a change during COVID was the fact that um, certain countries require you to have yeah. insurance before they'll let you in. Yeah. So if you do end up sick, you're guaranteed that the bills will get paid to the hospitals yeah. at, at where you're located. So so many reasons. Um, and I think just every day, every situation that we look at is just another reminder as to why it's so important. Because we have so many claims that, that come back that, uh, you know, they're, they're things you never would have thought happen, would happen, but things happen. They sure do, and that's why you need travel insurance. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our third prediction show that we've had for 2024. This is a lot of fun. I enjoy this more than anything throughout the year as I prep for the Weekly Traveler. Weekly Traveler we have produced comes out via email every Tuesday. And we try to produce these podcasts, though, at the bottom of that email, you can click on if you want to listen or you want to watch us. It's been a lot of fun this year, Paul. We've got one more prediction show. Thanks for joining us, everybody. I'm Steve Glenn with Executive Travel. And I'm Paul Glenn. Please like, subscribe, share, and add any comments for future topics or questions that we can hit on a future episode. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week.